Yo, 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 what's up, what's up, it's your boy DL Modamu told we're back with another video. Today, we are watching Prim's Hood Cinema, and, uh, yeah, uh, what's this one? Gary Coleman vs. The Bike Man, Prim's Hood Cinema. So, we're talking about different strokes, okay, different strokes. I seen, what, the first season of different strokes. I ain't never seen the rest of the show like that. I seen like maybe episodes here and there, but I never seen it to completion. You know what I'm saying? So, but but it's funny, funny, funny show, funny old time show. So let's get into it. Steve Harvey show, hating basketball. We got little Kim. What the hell? Not a lot. So what? R.P. Gary Coleman. What's up with these lyrics, bro? I think the only person living is Ty Bridges, right? It don't matter if you poor. I got mine. Everybody's good. Like what? No. What kind of message is that? <laughs> it starts off with a disclaimer from Mr. Drummond, letting you know that it's gonna be a traumatic ass, weird ass episode. Tonight on Different Strokes. We're starting a special two-part show on a very two sensitive parts. And important subject, which is of deep concern to all of us. So the show is about Philip Drummond. He rich as hell, and he live in New York City in this nice-ass, fake-ass apartment. His housekeeper died one day, and Mr. Drummond ends up adopting her two kids, Arnold and Willis. All Fire, fight, hey, W guy. Why is she even here? She don't do anything. Chill. So after the credits, we see the family coming back from a bike ride around Central Park. Central Park, down the lanes, across the little ridges, around the reservoir, and over the winos. <laughs> Man, this shit is corny as shit already. People swear TV was better back in the day. It was not. Also, why are you talking? It was. Chill out. You ain't been adopted long enough to talk like this. The owner of the bicycle shop comes out and he's juggling and he's really fun and happy. The dad is loving this shit. He can't get enough. Look at this nigga. Oh, were you in the circus? As a matter of fact, I was. They used to bill me as the human cannonball. <laughs> Until the ball got too big for the cannon. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, bitch. <laughs> the bicycle man says he'll give Arnold a new radio for his bike if he comes back next week and does some work for him. What's the old saying? You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Pause. Come out with this present, you can scratch me all over. <laughs> Arnold is having trouble passing out the flyers or whatever he's supposed to be doing. Nigga, you don't really gotta pass them out. You know that, right? But throw them bitches in the trash and say you passed them out. Uncle True. Friend Dudley shows up to help him out and he says he wants to get a job at the bike shop too. You wouldn't want to cut it on my deal, would you? Absolutely. <laughs> Hi, Arnold. Well, I gave out all the flyers just like you said. And I'm back for another load. I have a way with words when I put my mouth to it. This sounds like a job for Captain Banana Split. That's my kind of captain. Let's split. <laughs> That shit is crazy. I, I don't. I, I really don't like that. Ew, bro. Uh, Who wrote this shit? Y'all are having way too much fun with the entendres and shit. Please. The entendres was kind of. It's crazy. You won't have a chance to melt. My tongue's faster than a hummingbird's wing. Oh my god. <laughs> they really spamming this laugh track every three seconds. I thought you said this shit was sensitive and important. Tone it down a little bit. I'm a very sensitive and important surgery. Arnold and Dudley go back to the bike shop to ride some bikes, but it starts raining and now they're stuck inside. <laughs> Ooh, you smell that? I bet it's pizza. <laughs> they don't call me old pizza nose for nothing. Shut the fuck up, bitch. Come on, bro. Somebody got paid to write this. This is horrible. It's a terrible pizza writing. Nose? Y'all not even trying. How much you get paid for this writing job? No wonder AI about to take your damn job. What is this? Yeah. <laughs> you know, guys, you can just have an awful lot of fun with your clothes off. Unless, of course, you live at the North Pole and go to freeze your tush off. <laughs> hey, you don't have any clothes on either. <laughs> You don't think I'm gonna let them kids have all the fun, do you? 
Looks like fun to me. <laughs> Nigga, this is crazy. He's showing these little kids naked pictures of himself. And the audience is laughing hysterically. I can't believe this shit. Who keeps putting this laugh? I ain't nervous. I'm glad I ain't see these episodes, boy. Man, why don't y'all get away from ah. me, man? I'll fucking kill it. Get away from me. Bicycle Man offers them some wine now. What kind of wine bottle is this? It's like a patrol bottle type shit. Nigga, they hey, he this probably some good ass wine. I'm not gonna hold you. They start playing Tarzan now, which involves them taking their shirts off. The audience thinks the shit is hilarious. They love this nigga so much. They keep laughing. They're rooting for this nigga or something. He starts taking pictures and shit, and that leads us into the next episode. It's a two part episode. All right, let's see those poses some more. Ah, so right they clapping for. Him. God damn. They drink some more wine and do some more double entendres. Bottoms up. A customer shows up to the front desk and is Mr. Drummond coming to pay for Arnold's bike? I'm surprised we haven't had a customer this whole time. Like, you just left your shit unattended? I'll take all this shit. Nah, I don't even know how to ride a bike. I shouldn't have admitted that. Hi there, Mr. Horton. Well, hello, Mr. Drummond. Oh, Arnold's really going to enjoy this bike, huh? If you'll uh, just the sign here for me. I remember when I got my first bike. I was the proudest kid in college. <laughs> Could you just sign right here, please? You know, I really am very grateful to you for letting Arnold earn that. Uh, oh, no, you know, know, you know, Mr. Drummond is in the store, cock blocking now, and the bicycle <laughs> man is getting pissed off. Arnold looks out the peephole and he sees his dad, so he dips off, luckily, before the bike man could do anything. Later, Arnold makes it back home, and Willis and Kimberly are getting suspicious about his new schedule. Arnold! <laughs> what are you doing chewing a big wad of gum like that? Uh, I have a big mouth. <laughs> Smart too, Arnold. You got booze on your breath. It's only wine. Willis and Kimberly smell the alcohol on his breath immediately. How, though? It's a big-ass piece of gum. No way they're still smelling that shit so strongly. they little kids anyway. What do they know? They don't know. Arnold that is crazy. says that he got some wine from Dudley's dad, and they believe him, I guess. The next day at the bike shop, Arnold is having doubts about hanging out again, but Dudley's stupid ass insists that they stay and drink more wine with this stranger. The bicycle man starts showing them some hentai or something now. We get it, bro. Did this have to be a two-part episode? It's the same shit, basically, he was doing in the first Yeah, one. two he parts is crazy. Them some porno. This is overkill, thousand percent. This could have been one episode. Man, I love cartoons. Me too. <laughs> Look at that girl, Mops. She's wearing a bikini. Not anymore. I don't like this cartoon. But I have nothing against this pot. <laughs> the cartoon mouse titties are too much for Arnold, and he decides to leave, finally. Good call, bro. It's funny, though. He was cool with the porno magazine and the skinny-dipping old man pictures, but he draws the line at mouse titties. That was yeah, crazy. Fair enough. Arnold leaves Dudley by himself with the bike man and heads home. Meanwhile, back at the house, there's somebody ringing the doorbell. They open the door and it's a giant mustache on the other side. Turns out this giant mustache is Dudley's father and he's wondering where he is or something. Did you check inside your fucking huge ass mustache? He put it in there, bro. Chill out. I feel a little awkward about this, but I'd really appreciate it if you didn't let him have any more wine when he's over here. Well, yesterday Arnold came home with wine on his breath and he said Mr. Ramsey gave it to him. Me? <laughs> Hello, Arnold. Well, I'll be going, Phil. Thanks for dropping by. Very good. We'll be in touch. He came to discuss something that I found quite informative. Oh, what's that? You and Dudley hitting the bottle. What you talking about, Dad? <laughs> hey, bitch, you know what the fuck you're talking about? <laughs> Stop playing stupid, nigga. Hey, I find it really weird that they call this nigga Dad. How long has he had these niggas? Like, two hmm. years? I don't think that's enough time, honestly. But Arnold comes home, and he admits everything to Mr. Drummond. Mr. Horton? The man in the bicycle shop. He gave us some pizza and wine. What else went on there? He showed us some pictures. Maybe we should go get Dudley. He's still down there. At the bicycle shop? Oh my god. Dad, I'm going with you. Mr. Drummond heads to the bike shop to save Dudley. Well, first he heads to the police station, I guess, to pick up some cops. Nigga, you wasting time. Go save this nigga. That's probably like a 20 minute detour, all things considered. You should have went straight there. Oh. 
Uh, look, I'm sorry, Mr. Drummond. I'm just about to close up here. That's... Now, where's Dudley? Arnold told us that he was here. Are you okay? Oh, Mr. Drummond, I'm glad to see you. Boy, I sure feel goofy. It's not your fault, son. And I don't blame you. And I'm not going to punish you. What's going to happen to Mr. Horton? Well, I think we got a darn good case against him, Willis. If I'd gone down and confronted Horton by myself, he would have been able to get rid of all the photographs before the police could even get there. True. Unfortunately, most parents do just that, and the guy gets off scot-free. Now, I'm saying, though, call the cops and have the police <laughs> in this situation. Ain't no telling what he in here doing to this kid. Nobody waiting for your fat ass. I gotta go to the station, explain the whole thing. You probably gonna make me sign some shit. That's like a 20 minute detour, at least. I didn't like the things Mr. Horton was trying to do in the bicycle shop, but some hugs and kisses are still okay. <laughs> what? You know, they really should have cut the live track song. It just yeah. makes the whole situation way more uncomfortable. But other than that, I think this was actually a good attempt to teach kids about stranger danger. A lot of these PSA type things will just have some evil shadowy figure offering you drugs or whatever. They at least tried a more realistic approach. Right. Sometimes predators aren't evil and shadowy. Sometimes it's a nice old white man who give you ice cream. Really, this episode seems like it's just meant to spark some conversations between parents and kids. And I'm sure it did. Anyway, rest in peace, Gary Coleman. You an all star? What you talk? Yeah, I never seen that episode. Uh, I have watched. I have watched different strokes though. Um, but um, yeah, that, was, that made me uncomfortable. I was like, what the fuck is going on in here? But anyway, man, shout out to um, Prim to the Cinema for this video, man. And um, yeah, I hate to watch that video. Anyway, uh, like my reaction, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and I will catch you next time. Peace.